Okay, we're in section 57 of the notes. You know, we're moving forward. Uh, we're almost at the halfway mark. Um, the structure of the document should be very consistent, section by section. There's contents for you to read and make some attempt to understand what you're reading. I will be honest, though, sometimes it's very difficult to understand what you're reading, but you still want to read nonetheless. You'll get better over time. Uh, then you're going to do the examples to reinforce what you've read is understood. And then you got to get busy with the exercises. All right. My name is Ron Bannon. This is a draft version of my adaption of Webster Wells's advanced course in algebra, which dates back to 1904. The PDF document is only being made available to the prison mathematics project participants. All right. In the future, <coughs> I do plan to publish this. For the students and teacher looking at these videos that are interested in getting a copy, what I can say is I'll, uh, I'll keep you informed, at least I hope I will, um, and you can reach out to me. My email address is Bannon, that's B as in boy, A-N-N-O-N dot U-S. Again, the document's not published yet. It will be published, though. At least I hope so. It's going to be a big document, though. So w w what do you have to do here? And certainly, you got to read through the contents. Now, some of you scroll through it too quick, you can't read that. We're not expecting you to read it from the videos. We're expecting you to read from either from the PDF or the actual textbook. All right. Whoops, I got some doohickeys over. I got to erase them. So let's take a look. Let's get busy with the instructions. All right, now again, hopefully you read this and you start to realize it has something to do with completing the square, and we'll talk through it. So the first thing I want to do is take this expression here, and I'm going to complete the square on it, and then we'll talk about what the question is. So it's going to be x squared minus 5x. Well, I'm going to take half of minus 5, and I'm going to square it, and that'll be 25 quarters. So I'm going to add 25 quarters. Now, if you add 25 quarters, you have to subtract 25 quarters. These are not equal, by the way. To make them equal, I could do plus 7. So what I'm going to do is concentrate on this part over here. Whoops. I'm going to concentrate on this part over here. And separately, I'll concentrate on this part over here. There's two parts I'm looking at. Let's do the first part. The first part's a perfect square. It's x minus 5 halves squared. And then I'll concentrate on the red part. When you get over there, what's well, going to be, uh, let's see, 28 minus 25 is 3 quarters. Okay, let's go back and read the question. When I'm reading the question, I want to point out they want to find a minimum of this. So you're looking at this, and you want to find a minimum of that. Well, a minimum of that, if you think about it, and again, I really want to concentrate on this, you're looking at that um, a term, which is something being squared plus 3 quarters, and you want to minimize this. And the only way to minimize that is to get the first term to be 0. right? Because the first term, you know, if you, if you did, no matter what numbers you put over there, it's going to be greater than or equal to 0. Maybe you should write that down. So x minus 5 halves squared is always greater than or equal to 0. Now, to make it minimum, I want to make it 0. And when does that occur? When x equals, so the minimum occurs, minimum happens at, well, at, at x equals 5 halves. And what's the minimum value then? The minimum value, if you plug in 5 halves, you get 0 plus 3 quarters, would be 3 quarters. All right? So let me just go back over and, you know, look, I'll read this to you. I did the completing the square part. I see that over here. And that's right over here, too. Same thing. What I say, I said since this is greater than or equal to 0, and well, we put that down as well for all values, all real values of x. And then I said over here, you know, that this guy over here would have a minimum at 5 halves, and a minimum value at 5 halves is 3 quarters. Now, the next one's a little trickier, and I'm going to rewrite it. I'll, I will get to their form, but I want to rewrite it. And the way I'm going to rewrite it, I'll write down minus 2x. My, I'm sorry, minus 2x squared, minus 3x plus 4, and just rearranged it. I'm going to factor out minus 2 from the first two terms. What do you get? Minus 2. And Wells does not do this. And you don't have to do it if you don't want to. If you're looking at what Wells does, it's really equivalent. And I'll, I'll go through this. It's going to be x squared. Someone says, why do I do this? Well, when you have a coefficient on the square term to be 1, it's a lot easier to deal with. What's the next term going to be? Plus... 
3 halves x, and then I get plus 4 in the end. All right, I got, I got troubles now. I'll tell you what the troubles are. I'm going to have to complete the square. So what I have to do, and before I do that, I make sure that if you multiply that, you get minus 2x squared, which is good. Then you get minus 3x, which is good. You do get plus 4. So I got to take th half of 3 halves, right? That's 3 quarters. And I got to square it. And what would you get there? 9 sixteenths. So I have to add 9 sixteenths here. These are not equal now. I got to make them equal. You got to think about it. And really what I'm doing is, if you think about it, it's really, if you multiply that out, you would get minus 9 eighths if I did that. Well, if I got minus 9 eighths, I want to get rid of it, I'd have to add 9 eighths now. All right, let me go through this one step at a time. Minus 2, we'll check it as well. X plus three quarters squared. Let me point out what I just did. I did this part here. Now I gotta do this part. And that's not so bad. Let's see, you get 32 and nine. That's gonna be 41. All right? Now again, when I say check it, you're really retentive. What you could do is just multiply it out. I just wanna go through that briefly with you. This would be minus 2, x squared, 3 quarters plus 3 quarters uh, is going to be 6 quarters. That's 3 halves. I'll write that down for you. And then 3 quarters squared is 9 sixteenths plus 41 eighths. I'm just checking. I'll erase this in a second. Minus 2x squared minus 3x. Well, that's going to be minus 9 eighths plus 41 eighths, minus 2x squared, minus 3x, minus 9 plus 41 is going to be 32 eighths, and 32 eighths is going to be 4. Does that give us back what we wanted? It sure does. You get the minus 2x squared, you get the minus 3x, and you get the 4. All right, I'm going to erase that because it's really not important for me to check that, but if you're a doubting Thomas, please check. All right? So, so what, what's the question? And again, be careful. They want the maximum value. And so I'm looking at this, and there's two things to look at. I'm looking at the first term, and I'm looking at the next term. And they want the maximum of that. Now, one thing you should realize about this is that, you know, minus 2 times x plus 3 quarters squared is always going to be less than or equal to 0. It's always a negative number or 0. Now, certainly, if I want this to be maximum... I want this thing to be zero, right, if I want a maximum out of this. How would I make that zero? Well, that occurs when x equals minus 3 quarters. So a max occurs, a max happens at x equals 3 quarters. And what's the maximum value? It'll be 41 eighths. All right, let's read, see if we got the same thing. It says this over here. We just wrote that down for you. And again, I got this part over here. They wrote a little different, but it's the same thing. <coughs> and then it goes on, you know, greatest value of this thing would happen at minus 3 quarters. We did say that. And the maximum value is 41 eighths. And we say that, that as well. All right? So it's really not much else to say about that. And um, what are you going to do now? You're going to do the exercises. And again, you're going to read through that. Um, uh, certainly completing the square. There's other ways to do it, but right now we're just doing by completing the square. And it's a useful complete square to maximize or minimize these functions over here. These are quadratic functions. There's some uh, exercises to get through. And do your best, all right? All the work is down there for you. When I say, I shouldn't say all the work, uh, the, the, the salient parts of the work are down there. And you look at that and try to make sense out of it, all right? And then what do you get? The sage code over here. And I just want to point out, looking at it, you know, reading it. I hope you start to realize that, um, you know, you can reset. What does it give? Clean sheet of paper. Define a variable. This is going to be um, me I'm assigning f to that uh, function, which is quadratic. And this one over here says find local minimum. And it says it, on an interval between minus 100 and 100, and it comes back with this over here. Now, granted, if you're looking at it and say, I have no idea what this is talking about, you know, you could do this problem, and we've done something like this before. So we get 6x squared minus 7x plus 3. And again, I know this is difficult. 
I'm going to do it a little bit differently. And what I'm going to do is, um, let's see, I guess I would factor out six, right? Let's put this down. When I say different, I'm not using sage, I'm, I'm doing hand arithmetic. And I want to look at these answers over and see what they got, right? And you might be confused by that answer, and we'll talk about it. So what do you get? X squared minus 7 sixth x, and then I'll put plus 3 over here. Got to complete the square, so half of minus 7 6 is going to be minus 7 twelfths. I'm going to square it, which would be 49 over 144. I'm going to add that. All right, and now what I got to do is I realize I'm adding on 6 times 49 over 144. Let me just go through that with you. And I hope you realize that 144 is 12 times 12. And so 6 goes into 12 twice. And you get over here, you get 49 over 24. All right? So I, again, I, I added odd 49 over 24, so I'd have to take it away now. Now, the point of this is to try to understand my answer that Sage is giving me. So what do you give here? 6 x minus. 7 twelfths squared. And when you get over here, well, let's take a look at it. Uh, let's say you get plus, right? I'm going to write this down for you. 3 times 24 is 60, 72, minus 79. Uh, I'm sorry, I said 79. I got 7 in my brain. 49, that's 23, right? All right, I'm going to say the minimum occurs at x equals 7 twelfths, and the maximum value, I'm sorry, minimum value, sorry about that, I really screwed up, didn't I? I'm trying to squeeze it in, I really can't. And the minimum value is, well, the minimum value is going to be what? 23 over 24. All right? So I want to point out 23 over 24 is this number right here. This is the minimum value. And this is the x value. This is the x value. All right? So, again, uh, Sage is really nice software, but you'd have to be able to read that and understand it. I just want to go back in the notes and show you that these things pertain to the problem. So we're looking at the 6x squared thing, right? Is that the problem? Yeah, right here. It's a problem that you did in the homework. And what are you seeing? It occurs at 7, 12. So let me point out this to you. We just figured that out. And 23, 24 is the minimum value. Okay? So, bottom line, not bad. All right? If you need to reach out to me, like you're saying, there's errors in my notes, please reach out to me. My email address is Bannon. That's B as in boy, the at symbol, N-N-O-N dot U-S. Thank you.